Ayman, let's dive right in. How are law firms impacted by initiatives launched by, launched by the government and the state of new energy sustainability laws that have been passed? Well, I believe the government has been doing several initiatives to fight climate change and create awareness around the country. For example, in 2014, the Egyptian government published the Renewable Energy Law 203 for 2014, which helped encourage the private sector to produce electricity from renewable energy sources and led more private sector companies to appear in the market. The government also launched the National Climate Change Strategy 2050, which incorporates activities and targets for green recovery into national planning and budget preparation. Dr. Ali Abu Sinna, CEO of the Egyptian Environmental Affairs Agency, highlighted a package of 127 projects that aim to combat climate change by 2030. Egypt pioneered the first sovereign green bond in the Middle East and North Africa, worth $750 million, tapping investors interested in financial and environmental returns. We at El Tamimi actually advised the government on the bond issuance. Its first impact report shows 46% of proceeds earmarked for clean transport, the Cairo monorail, and 54% for sustainable water supplies and wastewater management. The Railway Improvement and Safety for Egypt project is enhancing the safety and service quality of the Alexandria Cairo Naga Hamedi Railway. Uh, the project will also contribute to climate change mitigation and adaptation for rural and undeserved people with a shift to better, more affordable and greener public transport. Last but not least of the projects, an inclusive housing finance program supports basic green initiatives through the Green Pyramids Rating System, GPRS, certification. The GPRS involves examining site selection, designs, sustainable materials, plumbing and power saving tools. It is on track to see 25,000 social housing units certified across Egypt by December 2024, a big addition to the country's existing GPRS housing stock. It aims for thermal insulation and natural ventilation, adaptation to heat waves, grey water reuse and aerators in taps, and an adaptation for measure for houses with less access to fresh water. Finally, with the hosting of COP27 in Sharm el-Sheikh, this is an excellent opportunity for Egypt to keep climate at the top of the global agenda, which we believe is integral for the well-being of citizens, economies, and the future of our planet. From the client's perspective, what have we put in place to prepare our teams on the new changes, both internally and in our relationship with clients? The legal sector is under society's burning spotlight of scrutiny. Lawyers can mitigate the climate crisis by apprehending and embracing the subject and pursuing their moral responsibility, using their existing skills to yield a practical response. Many lawyers are exceptional communicators, enabling them to create a narrative which guides clients to understand complex concepts. Firms must encourage their employees to utilize these skills to champion net zero, both internally and externally, to cut carbon emissions and tackle the climate emergency. An effective response to the climate emergency requires firms to engage in pro bono work beyond client cases. We in El Tamimi have an obligation to deliver pro bono work every year with a minimum number of hours not to be undermined. We would like to see pro bono litigation also to enable influential precedent to be established. Firms must invest their resources in research for prospective climate legislation. This would create momentum for the passing of necessary statutory regimes. Law firms' investment into tackling the climate crisis is in their clients' and nations' best interests. If unpresented, climate change will have severe repercussions on society, business and the wider economy. Therefore, failure to respond to the climate emergency would be detrimental to clients, hence the legal profession in the long term. Law firms can effectively respond to the climate emergency through client-lawyer communication. As trusted advisors, lawyers are in an exceptional position to share key knowledge with clients, which may impact their decisions. Firms should ensure that employees demonstrate climate awareness when advising clients. Lawyers are in integral to the highly respected legal prof profession. Subsequently, legal teams are best placed to advise clients on what action they must take at the corporate level to mitigate the effect of climate emergency. 
Egypt will host COP27 in November. What impact do you think this will have on the business community? COP27 will emphasize finance and investment opportunities across various sectors. Egypt intends to utilize its incoming COP presidency as leadership on global climate action for business opportunities. According to the Minister of Environment, the energy sector, oil and gas, fuel for automobiles and electricity generation holds the most promise as it accounts for 64% of Egypt's greenhouse emissions. Agricultural activities contribute 14%, industry 12% and waste management and disposal 8%. The more opportunities that we open, the more likely we will realize our climate ambitions. So what are your top three pieces of advice to our clients that are navigating their business through the constantly evolving climate change regulations in Egypt? The path to net zero and increasing focus on a range of climate and sustainability issues create both risks and opportunities for businesses. However, the environment in which businesses are encountering climate change and sustainability issues is a complex one. Legal teams are also well placed to advise the business on what actions might be needed at a corporate level to prevent or mitigate the impact of future regulation, allowing businesses to maintain more autonomy in how they respond to the climate cha challenge. Increasingly, we find that legal teams need to be able to assess the risks of possible climate-related litigation risks, an area that is developing quickly. Such litigation is increasingly being run by activists and we anticipate growth in the number of climate-related actions. Regulatory change is one of the main drivers behind businesses developing net-zero strategies and embracing the climate transition. For example, in making a strategic decision to acquire or dispose of particular assets or enter or exit a new market, the climate consequences are of increasing importance. Legal teams and law firms can play important roles in advising on both the transaction specifics and the wider narrative such transactions play into. It is a useful reflection that responsible and sustainable business is a larger goal and ultimately a more lucrative one when embracing climate and environmental concern. Thank you, Celine, for giving us your insights and coming today with us. Thank you, Ayman, for having me. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. And please let us know if you have any questions.